you are doing so much to make sure your dog or cat is living their best life and they are incredibly healthy. You are listening to podcasts like this to get more information. You are not over vaccinating. You're not unnecessarily using chemical flea and tick treatments. You're not feeding processed foods or a completely processed food diet to your pet. You're doing so many incredible things to make sure your pet is the healthiest version of themselves they could possibly be. But in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the one thing missing from your pet's healthcare routine that nobody is talking about. What is it? Well, <laughs> stick around because we're going to talk about it. I'm going to break it all down for you, where I heard about this, how I'm implementing it, and how you can too. Oh. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, so I know you're like me. You are a 2.0 pet parent, right? Um, might even be aspiring to be a 3.0 pet parent. Who knows? But you're, you know, you're doing the best you can with the resources you currently have available. And you are trying so hard to make sure that your pet is the absolute healthiest and happiest version of themselves. I know that because you're listening to this podcast. And Yes, I know when we hear statements like this, the first thing we want to do is mentally beat ourselves up because we know that there is more that we could be doing if we just had more knowledge or more resources. And that's not what this episode is about. I don't, I want you to get all of that out of your head. I want you to get rid of all the negative thoughts because the reality is you are doing the best you can. I do want to add one more thing to the list. And this is actually not something you need to do every day. It's not super expensive. It is a small investment, but it is going to compound with interest over the years. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how that works. So first, let me tell you what it is. Well, to tell you what it is, I have to tell you a little story. I, as you probably know, am a certified holistic pet health coach. And to get this certification, I went through a very robust course created by Dr. Ruth Roberts. If you're not familiar with her, you can certainly go to my website and learn more about her. I have a link on my specials page to her shop. She has been a practicing veterinarian for over 30 years. Uh, she no longer practices, but she teaches online. And um, I think that is something that not a whole lot of veterinarians are doing, but we do have a, a really great group of veterinarians that are doing this today, and she is one of them. So this course is one of a kind. It's the first of its kind. Hopefully there will be more like it down the road because the reality is that it was created because we have a shortage of veterinarians and that is only getting worse. So while in no way, shape, or form would I ever say that I am a veterinarian. I am not a veterinarian. Um, and I cannot diagnose, treat, or claim to prevent any sort of disease or illness. Um, I can help people. I am a part of their medical group, and I do help people with things that they don't need to go to their veterinarian for. So when you go to your veterinarian, absolutely, your dog breaks their leg, absolutely, they need veterinary care. Um, you need lab work done? Absolutely. They, you need to go to the veterinarian to get that done. Do you need uh, a dental cleaning? Yes. That, you know, needs to be done under anesthesia, under veterinary care. So there are in wonderful, incredible things that our veterinarians are taught to do and that they do them really, really well. There are also things that we as pet parents have lost our way over the, the last, I don't know, six, eight decades 
10 decades, who knows how long this has been going on. I wasn't around back then, but that we should can and should be doing for our pets that we don't need our veterinarians for. And that's one of the things that I can help with. I can help with nutrition. I can help with chronic illnesses. These are things that our veterinarians are not well trained in and really, I mean, kind of clog up the system, right? Because they're, they have an expertise and to be doing all of these other things that they are not experts in kind of clogs up the system. And because we're already short staffed with veterinarians and veterinary uh, professionals, it is just like compounding and compounding and getting worse and worse. So that's the idea of the program is to help bridge that gap, to add another layer in your pet's medical team to be able to guide you and give you resources and give you recommendations that you can then choose to implement, uh, choose to talk to your veterinarian about, whichever, you, however you prefer to do it. And these are uh, based in fundamental medicine, medicine principles and traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, very holistic principles, um, combined with, again, for functional medicine. So that is where I learned about this. And what is this that I'm talking about? That is getting blood work done on your pet now or early on in their life if you're just now getting a pet. Why is this so important? And I, I have another story. I'm going to tell you about my dog, Kimberly, in just a minute. But the reason why this is so important is that, yes, our veterinarians have a, a reference range for each point that is calculated through uh, the lab work through the blood uh, uh, blood testing to get the results for all of these different readings, you know, ALT, um, you know, SDMA, which is actually uh, something that just IDEX does, and all of these different data points when we get our blood work done for our pets. And I don't want to get into like the details of what everything is and what everything is called because that is it something that most pet parents know much about? And that's okay. I'm fortunate to have had training in it now and understand how to read blood work and how to, how to figure out what's going on with your pet based on those uh, data points. Of course, your veterinarian is as well. And the reason why it is so important is because yes, we have these reference ranges saying these are, these are what we expect to see in a healthy dog or a healthy cat, right? But what is so important about having blood work done on your pet early on in their life and throughout their life, not just when something is going wrong, is that you have a reference point for what is normal for your pet, what is normal for your dog, what is normal for your cat. So if you have a, a dog, let's say, and when they are two years old, they have blood work done and I don't know, their hemoglobin is on the low side. It's not significantly low. It's not lower than normal, but it is on the low side. And then you have blood work done again when they're eight years old and it is on the low side, but still not necessarily abnormal or too low. If your veterinarian looks at that and says, hmm, this is kind of low, like we're not in the red zone yet, but this might be something we want to keep an eye on. You have this reference point from, guess what? This is actually normal for my dog. Um, and yes, we should look at it, but understand that it has been this way since she was two years old, at least. So this is a normal reference uh, uh, data point for my dog. So it gives your veterinarian or whatever medical professional you are working with for your pet, a frame of reference, something to pull more data from, especially if we are talking about when our pets do come down with some serious illness or disease. We have reference points to look at throughout their life. And so here's my story about Kimberly, my dog Kimberly. She is nine years old. And um, as far as we know, she's nine years old and actually almost nine and a half at this point. And, um, we had her blood work done for the very first time. So I have blood work from the, when we adopted her, the rescue gave us blood work that was done on her in Mexico. Um, for best I can tell it was done December of 2015. The reason I say that is because 
the blood work itself doesn't have a date on it, <laughs> but I have other um, pieces of information from the veterinarian in Mexico who uh, cared for her before we adopted her, who did a bunch of other work. Um, there are, you know, vaccines, and I believe she was also spayed. So it makes sense that they did the blood work at the same time she was spayed, and that was December of 2015. So I have no other reference point for her in her life. Up until now, she's nine and a half, really, years old. And we had a couple of slight issues, nothing outrageous, but a couple of things we're looking at. One is, um, is she anemic? It kind of looks like she might be anemic. We'll see. I'm actually getting her retested in a couple more weeks. And um, also her liver enzyme values were a little bit elevated. I have a reason uh, uh, for her en liver enzymes being elevated. We had just finished a detox. And um, so you know, I have a plan of attack. I know what we're doing. We're, we're going to retest here in a couple more weeks. Um, but what's important is that I, I didn't have any other reference points for her. So when I got this blood work, uh, these blood work results for her, and I only got them done because I said, Hey doc, it's, you know, we're doing her annual physical. Um, she's nine years old now. That means she's going into her senior years. I have never had blood work done on her. I feel like, you know, better late than never. Let's let's get this done now. And the doc was like, I mean, if you want to, because she had no reason to run blood work in her mind. I other than the heartworm test that I requested, because we do have uh, a test, her heartworm test done every six months. But you know, the doc had no reason to ask me to do lab work. There were no issues. There were no symptoms going on of like, hey, you know, she's slowing down or she seems like she's not feeling it. There was nothing going on for the doctor to say, I, I recommend we do lab work. So it was me as my pet's advocate saying, she's heading into her senior years. I don't have any other blood work on her really, except for back in 2000, at the end of 2015, we're in 2023 now. And the you know, doc's like, sure, if that's what you want to do. So I had senior, a senior panel done on her so that I got along with your analysis. That's something we'll talk about also in just a moment. So that I had a full, full set, full set of data points for her that now I can use moving forward. Again, I just said we had two slight issues. The anemia, my, my veterinarian actually didn't even bring up to me. Uh, I was reviewing the blood work after the consult, you know, the vet calls you and say, hey, you know, this is what I found from the, the blood test that we did. This is what I recommend or all's good or whatever it is, right? And I said, okay, great. You know, I, uh, you know, my vet wanted to put her on a medication for her elevated liver enzyme. They're like slightly, slightly elevated. And I said, mm, okay, how about you send me the blood work or you send me the, the re test results. I'll look it over and I'll get back to you. So I did that and, um, and I gave her my plan for, uh, what we're going to do, not putting her on a medication. And, um, I'm doing a different, uh, form of detox. So she did a, a zeolite detox right before the blood work. Now we're doing a milk thistle detox, but I'm also using an activated charcoal binder. It's it's uh, a formulation and not solely using activated charcoal. It's a formulation from Polypet. Um, and if you're interested in that, let me know. We can talk about that more uh, in another podcast episode, but I'm using that binder to help her liver purge all of the toxins that, that the zeolite was trying to get out of her system. And now the milk thistle is, is working to get out of her system. That binder is going to help the liver actually get it all out and purge it from her body. And we are going to retest her. So I can see how her um, liver enzyme values are changed once the, the detox is done. So 
I gave that plan to my veterinarian. She said, sounds good to me. We'll recheck the blood work and, and go from there. And of course, then I also brought up the fact that I saw that it looks like she's uh, a little bit anemic. So I'm working on that on my own, uh, doing a couple of things because she actually gets plenty of organ meat. She eats plenty of liver. Um, she shouldn't be anemic. So, uh, my, my feeling is that there's something going on with absorption of nutrients. So we're working on, on that as well. Um, but that is kind of a side note to the fact that if I had prior blood work that wasn't in Spanish that I could actually read, the blood work I have from 2015 is very, it's very short. Like it doesn't, um, it is in Spanish, so I have to translate it to figure out what it actually is, but, um, it doesn't give me all the same data points. So I don't really have a whole lot of reference to go back to. If I had had something from, you know, a few years ago, I could look at it and say, oh, this actually hasn't moved at all, or it has improved or whatever has happened over the past few years. So the importance of getting blood work done to have those data points for your pet is so important. And I feel like nobody that I know of is really talking about this. Um, there are, you know, thousands of freaking supplements that people are talking about now. Of course, we're talking about diet and nutrition. We're talking about over vaccination. We're talking about the flea and tick meds and the neurotoxins. And we're talking about how toxic our environment is. We're talking about all of these things. I just, I don't feel like anybody is talking about, and this is like something that it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a small investment. Maybe every couple of years, it's not huge. It's not something you have to remember to do every day. It's just data that you have for your pet, um, to help you and anyone else on your medical team and your veterinarian make informed decisions when something does go wrong. And, you know, it's not, it's not sexy to talk about, right? It's not earth shattering or life changing to say, you know, you're, I'm not providing you something that you have never heard of before that you're like, Psh, you've blown my mind, right? So it's not super sexy to talk about, but it's so important to have these data points. And so earlier I mentioned something about also getting the urinalysis done for Kimberly. One other thing that I learned about getting blood work done, having these data points for the, the blood lab work, a blood test is uh, for lab work. If you're getting, you know, you, you're, you're getting all the data points and you're getting the, the blood work done, your data points are never complete unless you also have a urinalysis done at the same time. That is so key and actually something that I learned from Dr. Judy Morgan's course. I took her course as supplement to Dr. Ruth Roberts' course. Uh, I took Dr. Judy's course on understanding lab values and I, I only took the pet parent version and it was so incredibly informative. It really rounded out and gave me a huge, you know, 10,000 foot view, whole picture of how to understand and evaluate lab work on our pets. And one of the like aha moment things that she said in that course was that lab work is never complete without a, you know, blood work, blood, blood lab work is never complete without a urinalysis being done as well. So it is so important get these both done together. I, I getting them, I actually have a vet come into my home. So she's a house call vet to do all of the annual exams on my dog and my four cats all at the same time. It all happens in March every year, uh, since we moved and, and I found this veterinarian and they're, all of my cats are seniors. Um, two of them are 15 this year. Two of them are 14 this year. Kimberly is nine and a half right now. As far as I know, <laughs> I actually sent in the, um, Embark has a age test now for dogs. 
And I got that from my husband as a Christmas gift and I sent that in and I don't have the results yet because I did send in the sample. Um, but I got an email saying, Hey, um, we found an error in our data processing and we are working to fix it. Do you want your money back or do you want to wait? It's going to be approximately, I don't know what they said, like a month and a half or something, uh, two months. I, I don't know what they said. I haven't heard anything more on it. And I was like, I'll just wait. No big deal. So I'm going to find out for sure how old she is. Hopefully one of these days soon. But until then, my best guess based on what the rescue told us is that I, I have her birthday in my head as Halloween, October 31st. Um, that's when we celebrate. And so she's about nine and a half right now. And so she's entering her senior year. So at this point, it's like they all get their senior panels done and they all have a urinalysis done at the same time. And especially for our kitties, I like my cat Riley. I can't tell you how many times I have, I'd have to go back and look through the paperwork. I have had a routine urinalysis done on my cats and Riley has had a urinary. Now he has had urinary issues for many, 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 many years. Um, so I now know like it's in my head. I have to have routine urinalysis done on him more regularly um, d just to check and see what's going on because he gives me absolutely no indication that he has anything going, like literally no indication from him whatsoever. His mood doesn't change. His behavior doesn't change. His bathroom habits do not change. I have no indication from him whatsoever that he has a, a urinary tract infection. So, um, yeah, I, I these are so incredibly important and it is, our, our kitties especially, they are so good at hiding when they don't feel good when something is wrong. So having these, these tests done routinely is so important because if we can catch something early on, we have a much better chance of helping our pet, possibly even reversing what damage is done. Now, that's not necessarily true with everything, but certainly getting that support that our pet needs that it doesn't get any worse. Yeah, we can do that. So, but we need these rut routine testings to be done, uh, to be able to catch these things. So that is the one thing that I, I think is so important. I wanted to talk to you guys about, because I don't feel like anybody has really talked. I mean, yeah, I have heard it here and there, but it never made a huge impact on me until I went through this course and believe this is a very robust course. And the fact that this is one of the like key takeaways that I have taken from this course, I think is really interesting because it's not something that like any of the other students um, really have put a whole lot of emphasis on like going through, there's a lot of, you know, mentoring going on and a lot of group calls and group discussions. And I, I feel like I'm the only one who has taken this <laughs> and, and, and been like, God, like we really need to talk about this guy. This is, this is so important. We really need to make this more, um, part of the mainstream. Like we, we need to regularly be like, I'm over here, like snapping my fingers now. Cause I'm, I'm, a, if you watch the video version of my podcast at all, you know, I talk with my hands like a lot. My husband makes so much fun of me. Um, he makes fun of me all the time because I'm just like blah, talking with my hands. And, <laughs> but anyway, um, so important. It needs to be a staple part of our mainstream conversation about caring for our pets, which is why I wanted to make this podcast all about it. So that's it. In a nutshell, we need these data points. We need these routine tests to be done. Um, yeah, to stay on top of our pet's health and to be able to look back and see, is this really abnormal? for my pet, right? What is normal for my pet? Supersedes what is normal for the average dog or cat, right? What is normal for your pet supersedes the average norm for their species, in my opinion. Maybe not 100% of the time, but like a lot of the time. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast episode. I do hope this was helpful. I hope it makes you think a little bit please reach out to me on social media or, hey, even better, go to your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever it is. Take a screenshot of what you're watching. Make a post about it and say, 
This was an incredible episode from Jessica. Go check out the Pet Parenting Reset. Make sure to give it a follow on your podcast app. I would really appreciate that because the more you share it with other people, other pet parents, the more we can get this word out to more pet parents to help them do better for their pets. Because I think the reality is that most people do want to do better for their pets. They're just, it's just not in their realm of awareness, right? So we need to get it in to their realm of awareness. So with that, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Please give your pets some extra love for me. And we'll be back next week with an incredible interview. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.